Hello and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent Laurel Duffin. This October, we take a look at some of the great things happening throughout JCPS. From fathers giving a rousing welcome to students, to businesses investing in education and their future employees, and even how this TV show is a stepping stone for our own correspondents. Heroes from the greatest generation have come to share their experiences. I'm Ballard correspondent Jalen Kuyper with the story. Highlighting the importance of positive role models and community involvement, JCPS Flash Dads surprised students at Rangeland Elementary by cheering them on and welcoming them to class. Come on, have a good day, all right? Good day. All right. This morning we are at Rangeland Elementary and we're here with the Flash Dads program. When I walked up here and I saw it, I was like, what was going on? And we're here just showing up, showing young people that we care, that we're here to support them, and that there is a group of individuals out here rallying for their success. You're able to walk. Uh, and see the kids' faces, the excitement on their faces when you have individuals who they may not even know are there cheering them on, just uh, uh, letting them know that we're here to, to support you as you walk into the school board. These are fathers, dads from across Jefferson County. These are just concerned citizens. These are individuals who are uh, uh, professionals who just want to make sure that they're there to, to help support each other. Support uh, from fathers is so important because, you know, where you have a narrative where there's not many uh, positive male role models uh, across the, the city, uh, to have a program like Flash Ads uh, helps increase uh, the positivity uh, and, and, and ensuring that, that each student has a positive male role model. People saying, um, have a good day and stuff like that. When a child gets out of the car, you know, it's ready for a brand new day. And so uh, they could be a little sluggish, could be a little tired. Um, but I think with the energy that uh, Flash Dads can bring, I uh, will help kind of inspire and to help uh, encourage them to get ready to, to start the day off right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great day. Let's have a great day. All right. A hefty donation to Fairdale High School has given students in the heavy equipment science program a big lift. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Well, we're here at uh, Fairdale High School. Um, this is kind of a, a big appreciation meeting for a few companies who have who've granted us a forklift. And uh, the heavy equipment science program is just going to give them a big thank you for uh, this awesome grant they give us of a brand new forklift. We've set them up with the tools that they need to be able to do the next piece of their life, which is the educational piece. This forklift, well, it's, it's, it's the first of its kind that we've been granted. Um, and it's going to open up ways for kids to learn how to drive the forklift, which obviously will open up job opportunities after high school. And I know that it's a, it's a fairly good paying job for a student just out of high school to be operating a forklift in a manufacturing facility. So you can click on that pause. It's a wonderful program. It's given me a lot of insight of what I wanted to do with my life and with, with my career. There's where it showed his execution. So once he did what If this program wasn't in place, you would not be able to, our students would not be able to get this type of experience anywhere else. It would, it would be non-existent. This program has set forth a lot of amazing opportunities. We've got kids working all over the city of Louisville, over in Indiana, and this is just gonna open up another avenue for them uh, to make a whole bunch of money. And uh, when, you, when you start talking money, their ears go straight up in the air. I understand the need for skilled workers right now in the country, and uh, there's a huge shortage of them. I don't have to go out to a, a separate school after I'm hired to get trained for, for weeks and things like that. It's, it's really easy to get the certification here if you just take the program seriously. I love the way that the schools are now. They're more focused on being college and career ready, especially JCPS and the people with us today. They have made a, a great, great uh, commitment to our students and, and, their, and their success compared to how schools used to be, where it was just, you know, you, they just wanted you to go to college, and if you didn't, then you didn't, and they forgot about you. So for, for, for me and my colleagues to get this, this education of, of skilled work and be able to go out into the field and the trade after we graduate, it's, it's phenomenal. 
I want to either go to Elizabethtown Community Technical College and I want to study applied science and diesel technology and I would love to eventually be a part of an operating position, you know, you know, like on a pipeline or something like that. War and history came to life at Ballard High School as World War II prisoners of war shared their harrowing experiences. Jalen Kuiper brings us the story. I was trained in Texas as a pilot and uh, flew Stearman's, which is a two-wing airplane. The Ballard History Club was honored with some very special guest speakers at a recent gathering. Two World War II veterans with life-changing stories to share. Aubrey Edwards and Alan Jones both served as bombardiers in World War II. They were shot down over Germany and imprisoned in a POW camp. The veterans took questions from the students. I was three years older than most of you all are now. And I had the responsibility of 10 guys and getting shot down and all that. But these guys were amazing in the prison camp. I didn't really know what to expect. I hadn't participated in any firsthand experience with World War II vets. So prepping the kids, it's kind of guys, I, I told them, you know, the, the gentlemen, they're 95 years old. I'm not sure what to expect, but let's have questions ready. And the gentlemen come, and I think the experience that they shared spoke directly to our kids even though you're talking three or four generations apart where our kids were able to see their dedication and their loyalty to the country and I think that spoke volumes through the stories that they told. They were very amazing. The fact that they had lived through World War II and the fact that they had lived through a German prisoner of war camp was just amazing. Their generation had this massive challenge posed to them and they didn't ask for it, it was just laid out in front of them. And even though they didn't ask for it, they still went out and they did what had to be done. After the meeting, students lined up to shake the veterans' hands and have pictures taken with these real-life heroes, something they all say they'll never forget. I'm Ballard Correspondent Jill and Kuiper for Our Kids. We have a lot more stories about Our Kids coming up. Stay with us. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. The portal is your online link to information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS Online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent Laurel Deppin. Due to a newly enacted Kentucky state law, students at Mail High School are learning the hands-only CPR method. So cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardiopulmonary is just a fancy way of saying heart-lungs, okay? We're at Louisville Mail High School and we just learned how to do CPR. If you see somebody collapse, we want to check to see if they're responsive. So we want to tap their shoulders. Light tap. Sir, are you okay? Sir, are you okay? We teach hands-only CPR to the students in JCPS and um, all over Jefferson County because now it's a law that all high school students need to take hands-only CPR. We're constantly pumping their heart and we're keeping that blood flow through their body constant. And the blood is what delivers oxygen and nutrients to our brain and our vital organs, and that's what keeps us alive, is that circulation. That's what's really, really important. There, breastbone's in the middle, that really hard part right here. You wanna take the soft part of your hand, you wanna find that place, 100, 120 beats a minute, two inches deep. That's what this is gonna look like. I'm showing you on a table, but you wanna do this on the floor. It's gonna be a lot easier. So, we're gonna push. That's about how fast you wanna do it. It is a lifelong skill that you can learn. 
And so many people do not survive cardiac arrest because no one helps them when they have a cardiac arrest. And if we can blanket the community by teaching all high school students and they can teach their family members, we're just reaching a huge population of people that will have this for the rest of their lives and teach other people as well. Look, this part of your hand needs to be right there in the middle. Yeah, there you go. Good, that's good. To see if they're breathing like the shoulders, like check, and then if they don't respond, like go to the side and then you like go like this. And then you go to like the, the hard part of the chest and you try to go two inches deep. I think it's important because everybody should know this because it would help more people. They said only one out of 10 people survive, so it might increase the odds of them surviving. You can learn it in five minutes. You just need to have a dummy to practice and have someone tell you that you need to push hard and fast, 120 pushes per minute and two inches deep. And then we give more information on why that's important and a lot of background information, but really calling 911 is the main thing and understanding how to understand when to call 911 and they help you with the rest. It actually stands for Automated External Defibrillator. These work by giving you instructions. Once you open them, they have an automated voice that's gonna tell you step by step exactly what you need to do. So even without this demonstration, if you ever had an AED nearby and you needed to use one, once you open the machine, it just tells you exactly what to do. You have to first find one, then you have to get it all set up, uncover the person's chest where it needs to be. You have to put on the pads and then you have to like charge the AED and then press the button. They love it because it empowers them to know what to do in an emergency. If somebody were to collapse, like at a football game or something, I would know how to help them and possibly save them. I think it will like help more people to survive because somebody could collapse out of anywhere and you can like save a life. Kentucky Now Works developed a new app that allows students to research data about current jobs and jobs of the future right here in Louisville. Southern high school students were some of the first to try out the new program. And so the ultimate goal of Cradle to Career is to create this virtuous cycle of success where good education leads to good jobs and those jobs then pay good wages naturally and that leads to more good education. Well, we're at Southern High School and we use this app to help us look into jobs that we might want to pursue in the future. And these, this app helps us to calculate how much we might make once we find these jobs and it also tells us how many of these jobs are actually in the market. My name is Jessica English and I'm a counselor at Southern High School and it is very important to me to use a tool like the Career Calculator with my students because it allows them to be able to navigate through a pool of information that will help them to make critical decisions about what they're going to do after high school. What I was able to find is that it told you how many job openings were available within the last 90 days in Louisville. It showed you how much money you would have to that you could earn and live comfortably with a four-person family if you were the only person bringing in money. So I'm excited to join everybody here today. Uh, students, educators, and workforce partners to unveil the Career Calculator. And this is a new online tool that will help students, their parents, and job seekers plan for careers and chart the education they will need to good jobs with all the information that you might be curious about but you just can't easily find right now. It not only gives you information about um, the income, but what colleges offer majors, and then again that big the big piece about you know what the projected um, openings for jobs are in our area. Creating this opportunity so students can learn about the salary, the demand, and the growth of careers they are interested in will empower them to feel confident in the classroom and will give them the reason of why do I need to learn this. What is it going to lead to? It was actually really eye-opening because at first I wanted to pursue these jobs, but I never looked into them. I would watch movies about the first male cardiologist, or I would hear people talking about cardiology, and I would be like, oh, that sounds really nice. Maybe I could follow cardiology, but I didn't really know what I could get from cardiology. 
hopefully you can uh, give the kids something to hold on to, the, to themselves so they will be self-motivated and self-regulated to follow through with some of the plants that they make. It is so invigorating and it's so nice because then you feel like you've really made a difference for you know the entire community when you empower one student. I'm very excited. My family supports me all the way through anything I do. My parents really are excited that I get to have this opportunity with this technology and to explore our chances and our technology so we know our future will be bright and I have a set plan on how I plan to get to my goal. Male High School's Junior ROTC program gives students a chance to gain leadership skills. Sanam Megan gives us an inside look. Purple Pride, Male High, ROTC winners die. Students at Louisville Male High are being taught to think more critical and be prepared for life. What is unique about the Junior ROTC program, why kids take it is, one, uh, we, we teach life skills here uh, that, that could help them later in life when they leave high school here at Mayo and go off into college where they'll start developing those more and help them through college and then into their adult life. Ready, run, four, four. We have three teams. We have rifle team, which does marksmanship, a drill team, which is drill and ceremony, so it's like marching and stuff, and then raider team, which is like physical fitness. March. Teachers tell me they wish everyone was in ROTC just because ROTC cadets are, have the discipline, they respect the teachers, they don't cause a lot of issues because we learn really early that you can't do that in ROTC and, I wish, and teachers always wish that everyone did it. There's a level of uh, work ethic that we are taught here and it's, it's helped me in class at ROTC but it's also helped me in school because I work hard on assignments that I wouldn't normally and I uh, plan a lot better and I just do a lot better job of um, being the best student I can be and it shows me what I can become and what I can achieve. Hula, Major Hula! Hula, take your seat. This is PRP correspondent Sanam Megan reporting for Our Kids. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. My name is Natasha Williams. I am a bus driver for Jefferson County Public School. For me, it's all about the children. Because most parents work, I'm part of that working parent group. I'm usually the first person to say good morning to a child. And I don't take that um, for granted. I love that journey. Over 12 years, I've seen some children grow up to be adults and have children of their own, and I get to pick up their children. When you meet bus drivers, you instantly have friends because we wave and talk to everyone. So if you're on a bus, um, you'll see all the bus drivers waving at, at each other. It's been great for me and for a lot of other bus drivers. I always tell them, just try it. If I can get them to stay one year, they'll stay a lifetime because it's a really good job. It's more of a calling for me. It's the right job. I'm Natasha Williams and I am JCPS. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard correspondent Laurel Deppin. PRP's Jalen Level, one of our very own Our Kids correspondents, had the chance to travel to Washington, D.C. to work with the National PBS NewsHour Labs. Let's take a look at his experience. Hello, and welcome to Our Kids. Yeah, I always knew since I was 13 that I wanted to pursue a career in broadcast journalism. I'm PRP correspondent Jalen Level. I'm a senior at Pleasure Ridge Park High School, and this summer I had the awesome opportunity to intern and work with PBS Reporting Labs. Okay, so you're, you're struggling with how to cut this down. Yeah. I'm involved in the broadcast communications class for Ridge News and WTRP. I had to uh, submit a video of all the work that I did for PBS and KET and uh, our kids, and then I Miss Dunn had to watch it and edit it, and then we submitted it to um, PBS, and about six months later, they. Uh, contacted me back and said I was selected to go to the um, internship. Good evening, I'm Judy Woodruff. It was a great experience just being, working with Judy Woodruff, how she came in sometime and just gave her some critiques. And then like, I think it was like maybe 10 o'clock at night, 
Hari had just got off the air and he came over and watched some of our stories. So it was just pretty cool seeing professional, just like I watch you on TV and now you're standing here telling me I should do this or, you know, your, your, um, your work is beyond your gear. So it was just great. When we uh, first got there, it was kind of like a social gathering where we met everyone and mingled. And then uh, the second day we um, did five corners to where they taught us editing skills and lighting skills. It was just, I mean, we would wake up at seven o'clock, wouldn't go to sleep until 11 o'clock from editing and shooting. And, the teamwork aspect was different considering I normally work by myself, but it actually opened my eyes to see how other people do things. Harmful environmental contributors had become a growing concern. Our story was mainly about um, the uh, environment and how it plays a big role with DC traffic and pollution in the air. Months before we actually uh, went to DC, we um, had Google Hangouts, so I met the people that I would be working with. And we, um, we had about 10 different stories and then we narrowed down the story. People are buying a lot of bikes now. The bike shop actually called us back after 10 other groups didn't. So they called us back and we basically just set it up. My part specifically was the interview. So I, um, late at night, I um, came up with some interview questions and when we got there, everyone else was um, shooting B-roll and just checking out the scene. And then I did the voiceovers and did some of the editing. Levine and his company, are setting a green example. I, I definitely Shaping felt a lot of pressure. Um, waking up at seven o'clock in the One morning, cuddle. going to sleep at, at 11, time. them saying you only have two days left, tomorrow's already booked, so you can't edit. So it was definitely stressful, but you know, I appreciate it because that's um, the way the industry is and the real world is. So it was just, you know, great. The pressure was great. More than 1,200 students gathered daily? Oh, that's what's going to be. More than 1,200. Where do I go from here? Well, I'm gonna, of course going to stay with PRP until I graduate, but I want to go to um, either North Carolina A&T and um, study broadcast journalism there or go to Tennessee State University. I've always appreciated it, but now actually experiencing it, it's like, how do you do this every day, coming up with the story? It's crazy, but you have to put in a lot of work for your story to make airtime and make deadlines. Deadlines was one of the main things I definitely learned. That was pretty fun. Ballard High School graduate and CEO of Texas Roadhouse is encouraging students and teachers to make attendance a priority. Let's see how this restaurant owner is paying it forward. If you don't have perfect attendance, you won't get your education, and if you don't have an education, you won't be able to get into a good college. If you don't get into a good college, you won't be able to get a good job where you won't be able to make lots and lots of money. This new program rewards students, teachers, and ultimately an entire school for being present and prepared for learning. Each month, Thanks to Kent Taylor and Texas Roadhouse, a student and teacher from each of the 18 schools with perfect attendance will be randomly selected to win dinner for two at a Texas Roadhouse restaurant. It will make students stay at school because there's been a lot of students in our class that have been missing school and then they have to catch up and that slows the rest of the class down so I think this will make them come to school on time. I think it's important to be at school every day is because if you can't like come to school every day then how are you going to learn and so i think that they should have perfect attendance so they can learn every single day i, I think anything we can do to help students uh, attend classes more regularly is very important and that uh, we're proud to be part of this program i think uh, at least one of them we're going to hire down the road we are jcps Fern Creek High School students got some hands-on experience as interns on a movie set. Parker Yonig shows us the action. JCPS students Molly Wright, Alexis Harding, Brent Donahoe, and Mackenzie Drees have been spending their school days on a movie set. These students have been interning for the movie and Then I Go, where they were tasked with making a behind-the-scenes documentary. This major motion picture was based off the book Project X by Jim Shepard. Many of the production crew, including the director, are based in Los Angeles and came to Louisville to make this film. The director chose many of the areas to film, including Fern Creek, thanks to the Louisville Metro Film Commission. These Fern Creek students were able to travel to these areas to film their documentary and help around the set. Though many may see this as a chance to get out of school, a lot of responsibility was put in these students' hands. 
A day of filming is very crazy just because we have to work around everyone else. We have to make sure before we even leave school that we have the camera, the batteries, and everything. everything's ready to go. And it's a lot to know what we need exactly just because it's not for our kids, it's for behind the scenes on a movie, so it's a lot different. The Fern Creek crew was able to take on this challenge thanks to their telemedia program. This program allows students to have a hands-on experience with a TV studio and radio station. However, the movie set is a different world. Um, I've definitely learned a lot. Like, when you're on set, it can be, you know, you can mess around and joke around sometimes, but then there's other times when it comes down and you have to be serious. The director and movie crew are entering the movie into the Sundance Film Festival. This festival is where many different independent movie makers present their movies to win awards. Because And Then I Go is going to be in a competition, the movie crew made sure everyone was being productive. The people on set are very serious. Um, they're very strict about day-by-day -day procedures, but they do get the job done. Um, they can be mean to each other, but you know, it's out of love just to get it done. The Fern Creek crew was able to participate in a real movie set where they interned and filmed. These JCBS students were able to experience movies outside of school. Opportunities like this show that JCBS students do not need a classroom to get work done. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Parker Yannick. In our kids news, we'd like to congratulate the Valley High School students who created a company called Valley Tech, which builds websites and provides social media support. They were honored for their innovation and skills at the annual EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We have already planned to expand beyond our work fields, such as entrepreneurship, networking, classroom, and people skills. Make sure you check out the JCPS Showcase of Schools on October 28th and 29th at the Kentucky Exposition Center. Students and parents can get all the information they need about option and magnet programs, registration, and other details. You can find out more information on the JCPS website. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. And you can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids. Hi, I'm Laurel Deppin. I'm a senior this year at Ballard High School and I'm a part of the Ballard Broadcasting Program. I wanted to be part of a broadcasting program because I was always told that you should do things that you're passionate about and stuff that you're good at. And for me, that's broadcasting. Some of the biggest challenges are probably just the fact that we go live every single morning and um, that's a little stressful. I guess one of my favorite parts is also the hardest part. I like being challenged. As being part of this program at Ballard, I was able to um, visit Western Kentucky University and tour their broadcasting facility, as well as Campbellsville University. I've been able to work with our kids for Jefferson County and do news packages and host. I think it obviously sets me up for a career in broadcasting, which I want to do, but it also provides me with the ability to know that I can work hard at something and become good at it. Thanks for supporting our kids. I am JCPS.